In this video, we're going to take a look at the concepts of logical consequence and tautological consequence and how they relate to one another. So let's check it out. All right, so our concept of logical consequence maps on to our notion of a deductively valid argument. And if you'll remember, we said that a valid argument was one that if the premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. So it's not saying that for an argument that the premises are, as a matter of fact, true. It's just if they were to turn out to be true, does the information in the premises make it such that there's no way for the conclusion to be false? That is, it makes it such that the conclusion must be true. If that holds of an argument, then it's a valid argument. And then what that also means is that the conclusion is a logical consequence of the information that's contained in the premises. So take, for instance, a rather simple argument. A is to the right of B. Therefore, B is to the left of A. By the meaning of right of and by the meaning of left of, if that first premise turns out to be true, there's no way for the um, conclusion to be false. So it's a valid argument. And what that means then is that information is a logical consequence of this information. So um, B is to the left of A is a logical consequence of A is to the right of B. And in fact, in this particular case, it turns out that um, right of A is to the right of B is also a logical consequence of um, B is to the left of A. Okay, let's look at a, another example. If it rains outside, then the grass is wet. It rains outside, therefore the grass is wet. Now again, if this information turns out to be true, what our first premise tells us is that there is a certain relation that holds between R and W, that holds between it raining outside and the grass being wet. Namely, such that uh, there'll never be an instance in which this is true and this is false. So that will never happen which means that if this is true, this will have to be true as well. And our second premise just says that this is true. That's what it asserts. So based on that information, there would be no way for the grass to not be wet. That's going to be an impossibility. Um, so the grass being wet then is a logical consequence of those two premises. All right, so let's now turn and take a look at tautological consequence. Taking a look at it can actually help us better appreciate or better understand the notion of logical consequence because tautological consequence is a special case of it. It's a special case of logical consequence. Um, specifically, it's a kind of logical consequence that is purely a function of the truth functional connectives. So it's the meaning of the truth functional connectives that um, determine that one statement is a logical con consequence of some other set of statements. And if you recall, our truth tables are only sensitive to the truth functional connectives. So that means we can use truth tables to determine whether we have a tautological consequence or not. All right, so how do we go about doing that? Well, let's say we want to figure out whether some sentence Q is a tautological consequence of some set of propositions. Um, you might want to do that because maybe you're looking at an argument in which Q is your conclusion and these set of propositions are the premises. What you're going to want to do is make a joint truth table I like to put Q 
cue or whatever the sentence is that we're testing, uh, whether it's a tautological consequence, at the very end. And then you need to put all your other propositions, these guys, um, up on the truth, the joint truth table as well. So let's say we've got the first proposition. We've got however many propositions that there'll be, that there are in this set. And then the last proposition, whatever number that is. And of course, we have our reference column. So how, whatever the uh, types of atomic sentences that we have in all of these uh, propositions that we're looking at. And then we have the various truth combinations that are available to us. We exhaust all those possibilities. And what we want to do then is we want to figure out which of these rows are rows in which all of the propositions or premises end up being true. And for any proposition that ends up with a false, or I'm sorry, for any row in which we find one of our propositions having a false, we ignore it. We only want to be concentrating on the ones, the rows, where all of those propositions are true. And why do we want to do that? We want to do that because tautological consequence is helping us refine our understanding of logical consequence, it being a, a special case of logical consequence. And if you'll recall, we said that logical consequence maps onto our concept of a valid argument. And a valid argument is an argument that has this property. If its premises are true, then its, then its conclusion must be true. Or another way of saying that is it's impossible for both all of its premises to be true and its conclusion to be false. Well, because our reference column because our reference column exhausts all the, the possibility of truth combinations, then it's going to turn out that these are all the cases in which all the premises are true. The only possible cases in which all the, prom the um, premises or the propositions in question are all true. So then it's a matter of detecting whether what would be our conclusion, in this case Q, whether it's true in all those cases. Because if it's true in all those cases, then it is impossible for all of those premises to be true and for Q to be false. Whereas if we find one case in which Q turns out to be false, then it's not the case that all those, um, based on the truth of all those premises, it's impossible for, the, for Q to be false. So this notion of tautological consequences is trying to map on that insofar as the truth functional connectives can force uh, an argument to be valid just by the meaning of those connectives. All right, so what that means is we look to see whether these are all true. And if they are all true, then Q is, in fact, the tautological consequence. However, just one case 
of q being false, where we have a, a row in which all the propositions or premises, the, the p1 through pn, where those are all true, and there, yet there's a case in which q is false, then it's not impossible for all the premises to be true and the conclusion um, to be false. So um, it's not going to be a tautological consequence. It's not going to map, it's not going to jive with our concept of validity. All right, so that's how we figure out tautological, that's how we figure out whether one proposition is a tautological consequence of another. All right, so let's take a look at this joint truth table um, and use it as an example for determining whether one sentence is a tautological consequence of another. Uh, first, let's check to see whether P or R is a tautological consequence of these two propositions, uh, either P or not the case Q and Q or R. Uh, of course, the first thing that you're really going to need to do is to determine the truth conditions for each of these sentences, but <clears throat> for time considerations, we already I've already got that all figured out for us here. The next thing that we need to do then is to um, find all of those rows in which uh, the propositions in question, these two propositions in question, are both true. Um, and to ignore any of the cases in which one of them turns out to be false. So the easiest way to do this then is to just find all those rows in which one of those two end up being false. So this row is one of those rows, which means we can ignore it, right? It's one of these rows because P or R is false in that case. P or not the case Q is false in that case, so we can ignore it. We have another false here, so we can ignore this row. And we have a false here, so we can ignore this row. All right, so that leaves us with all the rows in which P or not the case Q and Q or R are both true. The next thing to do then is to see whether we can find a case in which P or R is false. But we see that it's true, 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 and true. And so as a result, what this true, joint truth table shows is that P or R is in fact a tautological consequence of P or not the case Q and Q or R. All right, but let's try going in the other direction. Let's see whether P or not the case Q is a tautological consequence of these two propositions, um, Q or R and P or R. So again, we are going to want to find um, isolate only those cases in which Q or R and P or R are both true. So since we have false in this case, we know we can ignore that row. Since we have false in this case, we can ignore this row. Since uh, they're both false in this case, we can ignore this row. Okay, so now we need to see whether there's any cases in which we have uh, P or not the case Q as being false when these other propositions are both true. Well, it's true here, so no problem so far. It's true here, no problem so far. It's true here, no problem for, so far. But uh-oh, it's false in that case. So there is one case in which it's possible for P or not the case Q to be false, even with, even if um, those two other propositions are true. 
and therefore it's not a tautological consequence of those propositions. So the very same truth table we can use, joint truth table we can use to show that P or not the case Q is not a tautological consequence of P or C um, and Q or R. All right, that ends this video on logical consequence and tautological consequence. Hope you found it helpful.